bring in uh, Assistant Chief Justin Harper. Uh, Chief Harper is the Director of Denver Health's Paramedics uh, Education de uh, Department, uh, where he oversees the uh, training and continuing education for 300 line paramedics and almost 1,000 Denver firefighters. He's been, uh, um, he's been intimately involved with the Denver STAR team. It's a co-responder model of a paramedic and a licensed clinical social worker, which has been getting some remarkable national press, largely because of numbers that have just come out. And so we're really excited to have you, Chief Harper. Um, thank you. Hey, thanks so much, Tom. I, I appreciate the opportunity to be here and talk a little bit about the uh, STAR program. Uh, and thanks for the introduction. So um, my name is Justin Harper uh, and I'm a paramedic. Uh, I'm uh, one of the assistant chiefs for the Denver Health Paramedic Division. And like Tom said, I oversee the education and training, which includes uh, community outreach for the Denver Par uh, Paramedic Division. So uh, that's how I sort of um, became involved with the STAR program. So in uh, November of 2018, uh, the, the ballot initiative passed and it uh, supported uh, funding for the Caring for Denver Foundation uh, by the tune of about $35 million. And one of the initiatives in this was to look for alternative responses to uh, behavioral and mental health uh, crisis and substance misuse. Um, and, and so a, a team of folks uh, driven by Denver Police Department, Denver Police Department really should have uh, a lot of the credit, if not all the credit for the initiative of this program, uh, really wanting to get the, the proper resources to people um, in, in certain situations and, and recognizing that a uniformed police officer may not be the right response in, in a lot of these situations. So really uh, a lot of credit goes to the Denver Police Department to, for initiating this. And um, what, what uh, we did was we headed out to uh, Eugene, Oregon, that was um, uh, Denver Health, uh, you know, MHCD, so Mental Health uh, Center of Denver uh, and DPD. Uh, the teams went out and toured uh, Eugene, Oregon and their CAHOOTS program. Some of you may be familiar with that. Uh, it's out of the White Bird Clinic uh, in, in Eugene. And so it's a, it's a community response model uh, that they really based the STAR program on. Um, Eugene's a lot smaller than the city and county of Denver, and we have some unique challenges here. Um, so it wasn't something that they could just take the blueprint and implement it. They, we had to really uh, 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 scrutinize our program and try to figure this out uh, from the best perspective to, to serve them, uh, most people that we can and do it safely. And, and safety is really one of our primary concerns as we rolled this out. So the um, support team assisted response is what we came up with. Uh, we um, contracted with MHCD to provide a mental health provider. And then we decided to put a paramedic on this resource, um, especially for the pilot. You know, what we really wanted to do because we were gonna have calls, 911 calls coming in from a different perspective in a different way. Uh, we wanted to have that paramedic there to be able to uh, catch any sort of, um, uh, you know, uh, medical problem that might have sort of slipped through the net of uh, that 911 system. So we wanted to have our real experienced, trained healthcare providers or urban paramedics out there uh, with an opportunity uh, to catch any of those issues. So uh, initially for the uh, six month period that we started this, we ran about uh, 750 calls. Um, this was uh, the, the calls that we run. So they're filtered through the 911 system. They basically come in uh, through our dispatch or communications center uh, for the city and county of Denver. And the, the calls that we're looking for are public assist that would qualify for the star van, uh, intoxicated person, suicidal, uh, the suicidal series. So that is um, in our 911 system that will qualify for uh, three or four different types of suicidal calls. Uh, welfare check, uh, indecent exposure, uh, trespass or unwanted person, and then uh, the syringe disposal, which is through um, our, uh, our um, uh, 
Harm Reduction Action Center. Uh, so, so those are the calls basically that would filter through the system um, and, and, and prompt a star response. We only ran the pilot and we're still, still running the pilot as a matter of fact in District 6, which is uh, the downtown Denver area and, and Capitol Hill area. So our most densely populated and, and highest call volume area in this city. So like I was talking about for the, the results of that first six months, about 750 calls uh, for data, that's about 3% of the total call volume for uh, the, the Denver Police Department. Uh, and we had some interesting findings in that time. And I think most significantly in that time of those calls, uh, there was not one single call by the uh, crew of our star van for uh, additional resources with the police department. Um, so once the star van was assigned and responded to the scene, they did not need uh, any sort of police backup, uh, and uh, they were able to disposition disposition these calls in a different way. And so they're they're able to transport the patients to either a mental health um, uh, center of Denver facility uh, for treatment or for intake, or they were able to transport to shelters, local area shelters. Uh, they were able to problem solve whatever the issue is. If it's a uh, if it's a a trespassing problem or a problem where somebody's uh, indecent exposure, where they're changing clothes out on the street, um, they they were able to offer op opportunities to help people in a different way. Uh, and and so that that's really what this uh, program is about: is a, is a, the opportunity to to provide services. Um, and so. The, the van works eight hour shifts and they're running about six calls per day. Um, the numbers at the six month period were at about 750 were just over a thousand at this point. Um, and let's see here, I had one other thing. Uh, so the, the time on scene was the other piece that was uh, pretty interesting that came out of the initial um, uh, survey and that was our, our average time on scene is about 24 minutes. Uh, versus 34 minutes for police and fire and EMS crews. Um, so less time on scene for the star van, uh, obviously better outcomes uh, with, with uh, uh, providing these services in a different way. And, uh, and that's sort of the, the overview um, of the star van. And I'm happy to answer any questions that anybody has. And Chief, also a remarkable program um, in a completely different setting than we're hearing from James. And so one of the things I wanted to make sure I understand is it sounds like this, this star unit only operates on a slice of the city and that eight, uh, six calls in an eight hour shift is a busy, busy day. Um, is, what are you thinking about what might happen if this were offered in, in the other five police districts? The, the, thanks, Tom. The recommendation uh, out of the, the uh, first six months is that they, I, we're all considering STAR to, to be a success. Uh, we recognize from emergency medical services, from the police department perspective, from the community perspective, this is a resource that is clearly much needed within the city and county. Uh, and, and so the recommendation here is to expand, and that's what we're working on right now, is, is how do we expand this uh, with community involvement, um, uh, with uh, our, our public safety partners involved, and obviously 911 involved uh, in the process. So how do we expand this? How do we expand this uh, responsibly? Uh, but realistically, I think the, the, uh, the future state for the star van would be to have one star van in each and every district, a police district that is in the city and county of Denver. Uh, that would be the end goal. And I think we're all pretty much aligned uh, with that goal. It's just about right now, how do we make that happen uh, funding wise? And so I know that MHCD also embeds uh, um, uh, licensed clinical social workers with Denver Police. And so that Denver also has this co-responder um, that, that's more on the law enforcement side. So maybe you can talk about how is it that these two uh, programs coexist? Are there particular calls that are going necessarily to the, to the, uh, the police side of the house versus the EMS side? If you can talk a little bit about that. And the, and the co-responder program is, is working very well uh, for MHCD and for the police department. 
the the conversations that I've had with the clinicians that are working both sides of this, so they've they've done some work on the uh, co-responder side, and then they've done some work on the star van side. And so, when we work on the star van, you know, we're we're dressed a lot like you, uh, Tom. We're you know dressed uh, as not in the uniform. Um, we're you know we'll have some identifying uh, uh, name badges and things like that. But we're pulling up in the star van in, in a way that's very different, and we're we're greeted by uh, our um, patients or our clients in a different way, and it's it's far more welcoming. Having been a paramedic for 25 years, I can tell you, and 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 working on the star van myself, I can tell you, it is a completely different experience, and and it is it is folks are. Um, they're they're much more relaxed they're much more willing to have conversations um and there's a lot less pressure there and a lot less uh um, um fear uh, of of sort of you know incarceration or a negative outcome uh and so i think we're having we're having more positive interactions and i'm not saying that the co-responder program isn't the same but it is that they're not having positive outcomes, but it is a uniformed police officer with a mental health worker, uh, so that they're pulling they're, up in a marked police car. It, exactly, and it's, maybe with another with another unit covering, and and that's a different. Certainly starts things off a little bit differently versus healthcare providers. It it certainly does, and it requires a, an ability to navigate that scene. Uh, you know, a lot differently, and so the the police officers that are assigned to that co responder unit are very special individuals who I, you know, interacting with them, you can tell that their approach and their commitment to the community is different. Uh, and so they they approach these calls in a manner that is respectful and great. I think though, getting away from the uniform um, and, and finding uh, an alternative really does look like the star van if we're gonna be successful uh, in, in helping folks in a different way and providing support specifically uh, for those experiencing mental health crisis, for those experiencing substance misuse crisis, uh, and and for those who are just homeless and, and, and experiencing those associated problems, how can we help uh, uh, in these situations in a different way? So one of the things that we heard about with James is the sort of the community connections that they've been able to forge with a number of different providers. And so Denver Health is sort of unique in that it's a large healthcare entity that has a lot of its own behavioral health depth. Um, but uh, Don Parsons is asking, what connections do you have with community mental or behavioral health providers other than Denver Health, if, if you do? You know, if, we, if we're if we looking at areas of opportunity moving forward, the difference between our program and what they have in Eugene, Oregon is the, the they have this White Bird Clinic in Eugene, Oregon. Uh, which is an incredible resource that a lot of the patients and a lot of the uh, uh, clients that they interact with are going to this white bird clinic uh, and so the services that they provide there are not exclusive to mental health uh, there and, and we all know that substance misuse can ex can certainly exist outside of mental health connections uh, or excuse me mental health issues uh, so, so the MHCD is not always the answer for every single one of these problems. And so you've, you, what you've touched on there is our future opportunities to build more connections within the community, to have more resources. The Harm Reduction Action Center is something, it, it's a great example of how we can help these folks to do needle exchange and how we within the star van can be a part of that connection. Uh, but there are more of those connections that are certainly needed. And especially if we're talking about having a dozen of these resources uh, uh, roaming through the city at, at any given time during the day, we want to be able to have uh, positive resources to be able to take folks that, you know, obviously for mental health issues um, through Mental Health uh, Center of Denver, but also substance misuse, uh, how can we get them housing? How can we get them other types of uh, resources and counseling? And so that's what we're looking at leaning towards the future. It's been interesting as somebody who sort of pays attention to um, uh, field uh, providers uh, meeting mental health needs. The STAR program has gotten quite a bit of national news, uh, it seems, um, particularly lately, but over the summer. What is it that you think is appealing to these, um, these, these reporters or these journalists? What is it that the STAR unit is doing that's 
that is unique and 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 um, seems to be getting a lot of attention and and uh, high regard. I think we saw a lot of calls in the uh, spring and early summer to de defund, and you know you you'll hear this term and. Uh, defund the police and, uh, you know, let, let's let's allocate money in a different way. And I think that's that's both interesting and concerning to people. What does that mean, defund the police? And what does it mean to, to uh, change the way that their funding structure works? And I think that's why this has generated so much interest is because this, this necessarily was funded by uh, a ballot initiative. Um, but I think that in the future, this could be something that is actually a budget initiative for Denver Police Department or the city and county of Denver, uh, which is, you know, essentially one and the same. Uh, so so the, 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 the interest in my mind comes from that perspective of what does it look like to put resources, not necessarily into uh, policing, but into specifically helping people? And, and what is the outcome? Uh, does the 750 calls where we didn't have the police department responding, does that correlate necessarily directly to less incarceration? Does it correlate to less uh, uh, violent encounters uh, with the police department? Does it, does it correlate to less deaths? Uh, and so I think that's the interest around this. That's the driver, especially for the natural uh, national interest. And we're starting to see many, many other communities pick up very similar services uh, to this and, and modeling off of goods and modeling off of STAR. Uh, it's a remarkable program. Maybe you could talk a little bit more about the other initiatives that Caring for Denver is doing. I know that there's a uh, training efforts for all of Denver Fire and Denver paramedics. Yeah, they, they put together uh, uh, the, the ballot initiative language, which was great for us, uh, had uh, some some funding for training for first responders around de-escalation, uh, around mental health and substance misuse awareness, uh, and also some um, diversity education, diversity, equity and inclusion uh, and so, you know, thank you so much, uh, Tom, for your involvement in that process. We were able to come up with uh, a two hour long uh, training for our paramedics uh, and firefighters here in the city and county of Denver um, that is really pointed at how can we do a better job? Not only, you know, it's great that we have this resource with the star van, but we know right now we're not going to be able to reach all of the folks that, that are out there that have this need. So how can we do a better job as healthcare providers? When do we need to recognize that, that we need to be in charge of this particular scene uh, or this particular situation? Um, and how can we also, the, the other piece of this, and that you've been very instrumental in this time in helping us understand that the police department has really changed their approach. They're implementing a lot of de-escalation tactics they are working hard with their community to avoid some of these really bad outcomes. And so how, how can we as paramedics that are called to this scene, how can we continue that process and support them uh, through some of these calls? And so that's what that training has been effective for. Um, and we're, we're very thankful for, for your involvement in that process as well. I appreciate it. Thanks. I wasn't trying to plug my involvement, but uh, it's a it's a remarkable thing, and and we really appreciate um, your talking about it. 